Good morning, everyone. It is Monday, March 23rd, and I believe day three, day four of distance learning. I don't know, the days are starting to uh, meld together. But anyways, I just wanted to say thank you to those of you who got your IXL codes in on time. I will be grading those and updating School Loop today. If you did not get in and on time, please email me, talk to me, and we can figure out a time for you to get those done. Because this week will not make sense if you have not done last week's work. So without further ado, here is today's warm up. So on your piece of paper, you're going to be finding the greatest common factor. And we haven't done this for a while. It's been a, it's been a little while since we've done this. But another way of factoring is just finding the greatest common factor of two numbers and then writing both of those numbers as individual products. So if that doesn't make sense, don't worry, it will. So go ahead and write down these two numbers. Feel free to pause the video at any time if you wanna try this on your own or I'll do number one with you, and then you can always pause the video and try number two on your own, and then we'll come together at the end. So greatest common factor. A factor means if I were to write both of these as products, for example, 12 is six times two, six and two are called factors of 12. They're parts of that product. So when I'm trying to find a common factor, that means I wanna to try to find a factor they have in common. There's no other really way to say that. So like what goes into both 12 and 20? And if you know, two actually does go into 12 and 20. Two goes into 12 six times and two goes into 20 tw 10 times. However, that's not the greatest common factor because there's actually a number greater that goes into 12 and 20. So for those of you who have access to multiplication charts, here's how you can do this. You're gonna go across the top of the chart and you're gonna like go down each column until you find 12 and 20 in the same column. For example, if you start at two and you start to trace down, you're going to see 12 and 20 in the same column. That means two is a common factor. If you go on to three, you'll see 12, but you won't see 20 because three is only a factor of 12. It's not a factor of 20. Now what happens if you go to four? If you go to four, you're gonna hit 12, and then I believe two steps later, you're gonna hit 20. That means four is also a common factor of 12 and 20. And since four is greater than two, that makes it at least a greater common factor, if not the greatest. So let's go ahead and factor each using four. 12 is four times three. And 20 is four times five. So we found another common factor, but this one's greater than the first one we found. Now, if you continue to move along the multiplication chart, you might try five and see five goes into 20, but not into 12. Then you'll move on to six. Six goes into 12, but not into 20. As it so happens, four is the greatest number that goes into both of these numbers. So in this case, our GCF, or greatest common factor of 12 and 20, are four. What I would like to see you do on your paper, if you're following along, is to actually write them out as factor pairs. That will come in handy later on when we do actual factoring with GCF tomorrow. Feel free to stop the video now and practice with the second example. I will give you a hint. The second example does have a pretty big greatest common factor. Okay, so if I'm starting off with just factoring, now one way to do this is just you use your multiplication chart and you work your way across. And you're like, is two a common factor? Is three? Is four? Is five? Et cetera, et cetera. That's what we did here. That could be a little bit tougher here, or if you don't have access to a multiplication chart, then what I just said makes no difference at all. So what we're gonna do on this one, because these are bigger numbers, is we're gonna do factoring in steps. Meaning, we're gonna start with just any common factor, and then we're gonna just keep repeating that process until we find the greatest common factor. So if I'm looking at 36 and 24, a number that stands out to me that is a common factor of 36 and 24, I'm thinking six? Does six go into both? I believe so. So you could have started with any number. <clears throat> 
I'm starting with six just because I happen to know that six goes into both. So I'm going to start by writing each using six. Okay, so I know that six times six is 36, and I know six times 20, or excuse me, six times four is 24. Is that the greatest common factor though? Here's how you can tell. When I, what we call factor out six, I'm left with six. That's the second factor in my product. I'm just gonna double underline it so you see what I'm talking about. And when I factor out six from 24, I'm left with four. That's the other factor in my product. So here's how you can tell if that was the greatest factor. Do six and four have any other common factors? Meaning is there a number that goes into both six and four? Well, looking at six and four, they're both even numbers, which tells me that they have a common factor. That common factor that goes into all even numbers, two, four, six, eight, is two. So I know Six is not the greatest common factor because when I factored out six, I was left with two numbers that still have a common factor of two. So instead of erasing all of your work, just keep going. So now what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna factor two out of six and four. Watch how I do this. You can do it totally different if you want. Six is two times three and four two times two. Now, what happens to those sixes, though, that we brought out at the front? These two here, well, they're still part of your product because two times three is at 36, two times three is six, I still need that other six to make it a full product. So here's how I'm gonna do that. This is just gonna be six times two times three. Six times two times two. And I'm using the dot for multiplication to separate it from that product pair. Well, then this still begs the question, what is the greatest common factor? Because I factored out six and I factored out two. Well, that just comes down to simplifying this product. What is six times two? 12. So the greatest common factor here actually is 12. 36 is 12 times three and 24 is 12 times two. So our GCF here is 12. Now you could have figured that out starting anywhere. You could have started by factoring out two from 36 and 24. You could have started by factoring out four. It doesn't matter, just start with something. Find a common factor and then just keep factoring as you go. So we'll do another example like that in today's exit ticket. All right, so now for today's notes. Um, we're going to be finding the greatest common factor of monomials. So if you remember, monomial is the algebraic way of saying single term or one term. So in our example, we're going to be looking at 40x squared and 15x. The only difference between these examples and our warm-up is that I've now included variables, which does change things slightly. So step one, the first thing you're going to do is what you would have done in the warm-up. You're gonna find the greatest common factor of the coefficients. The coefficients are the numbers in front of the variable. So finding the GCF of the coefficients. So in other words, what is the GCF of 40 and 15? So I start thinking about factor pairs of 40. Now, when I'm doing this, there are a lot more factor pairs of 40 than there are of 15. So I would probably start with 15 and then work my way back to 40. So thinking of 15, the only factor pairs that come to mind are one and 15, which I'll write off to the side so you can actually see my thinking. I'm thinking one and 15 or five and three. And again, factoring doesn't matter the order. You can also write that as three and five. Now, instead of listing out all the factor pairs of 40, because there are way more factors of 40 than there are of 15, I'm just gonna check my factors of 15 and see which ones go into 40. So obviously one goes into 40. And you will find that it is important to write one as a factor. We'll look at an example later on. Does five go into 40? Yes, it does, five times eight. 
Does 15 go into 40? No. Does three go into 40? No. So even though there are more factors of 40, for example, two goes into 40 and four goes into 40, we don't need those factors because we just need the greatest common factor, which in this case is five. So now what I'm gonna do with that is I'm going to write each um, number using five as a factor. So 40 is five times eight, 15 is five times three. Now we are not done because we weren't asked to find the greatest common factor of 40 and 15. We were asked to find the greatest common factor of 40x squared and 15x. So step two is you're going to write both terms as products using the GCF. Okay, step two, write both terms as products using the GCF. So here's what we mean. We know 40x squared is going to be written using 5 and 8, and 15x is going to be written using 5 and 3. But we have to now account for the x's. So let's look at what that looks like. Let's start with 40x squared. 40x squared is equivalent to 5 times 8, that's our 40, and let's take x squared and also write that as a product. What times what is x squared? Or in other words, what does x squared actually mean? It means x times x. Don't forget that that's what it means to actually square a number, just multiply by itself. So this is what we're calling the factorization of 40x squared. We wrote 40 as a product and we wrote x squared as a product. Now let's do the same thing with 15x. We're going to start with 15 as a product using the GCF 5. And then we're going to bring in x. Now there's only one x here, which means it's just times a single x. Now, why did we do that? Well, we were asked to find the GCF of the entire monomial, including the x. So if I look here, now I'm looking for what do these two factorizations have in common? Well, we know the first thing they have in common is five, but can you see something else they have in common? I see an X here and an X there, which means they actually have five X in common. And that can seem a little weird, but just remember that X squared is X times X. So that's just another factor as if saying 40 is five times eight. It's just a common factor that you can pull out of a product. So here we go. Step three, find the GCF, write them both as products. All right, here we go. We are almost done. So it looks like to me that 40x squared and 15x both have a 5x in common. So the GCF, the greatest common factor of both is 5x. In your IXL code, that's all you're going to be asked to find. However, I want you to go one step further in your notes, in your practice. I want you to write both of these as a product using 5x. So what does that mean? It means if we took 5x out of 40x squared, what would that leave us with? Well, let's see. 40x squared now becomes 5x times what's left behind. So if I take out the five, that leaves me with eight. And if I take out the X, it leaves me with another X, eight X. So we've now factored 40 X squared. Five times eight is 40, X times X is X squared. Let's do the same thing to 15 X. All right, 15 X, let's start by taking out the five from 15 and the X. This is 5x times, and again, when you take out the 5, you're left with 3, and when you take out the x, you're not left with anything else. So it's just 5x times 3. So let's go through these steps just one more time, and then we're going to finish up with an exit ticket with more examples of how to factor monomials. We were given two monomials. The first step was to find the greatest common factor of the coefficients, or the numbers. To do that, we started with the smaller number, and we found just the factors of that number, 
and checked which ones were also factors of the larger number. You don't have to do it this way. It just makes for less work for me in the end. Step two, we wrote both terms, so monomials, as products using the greatest common factor. So we started by factoring out five, and then we also factored out the variables. So if it was an x squared, we factored out x and x. Over here, we factored out the five, and there's only a single x, so we just left that one there. Step three, identify the GCF, write them both as products. The GCF in this case was 5x, and when I factor out 5x from both, in the first term, I'm left with 8x. In the second term, I'm just left with 3. So let's go over another example, and then we'll wrap up with an exit ticket. All right, so I've set up another example. I've kept our first example up here just as a guide so we can go through the same three steps of finding the greatest common factor of these two monomials. So I chose 12x squared and 20x to the fourth because 12 and 20 were from our warm-up, so finding the GCF is gonna be a little bit simpler. So here we go, step one, find the GCF of the coefficients. Again, coefficients meaning 12 and 20. Start with the smaller number. What are factors of 12? I think of one and 12 first. Let me grab a different color. I think of one times 12, how about two times six? And the last one is three times four. Okay, now finding the common factors that 20 has, again, just checking the factors here, not starting from scratch. So 20's common factors, does one go into 20? Obviously one goes into everything. Does 12 go into 20? No. Does two go into 20? Yes. Two times 10? Does six go into 20? No. Does three go into 20? No. Does four go into 20? Yes. Four times five. And if there were any other factor pairs of 20, we wouldn't be worrying about them because they're not factors of 12. So in this case, what is our greatest common factor? It looks like our greatest common factor is four. Many of you knew that already, so you would be able to skip this step if you wanted to. Okay, now step two, write both terms as products using the GCF. Now you might be thinking to yourself, we just did that, uh-uh. Remember, there are still X's involved in our original terms. So step two, both terms using the GCF. So 12x squared, I'm gonna write it below, is using our GCF, four, four times three, and then what does x squared actually mean? It means x times x. That, that, that's the factorization of our first term. Second term, 20x to the fourth. <clears throat> Using our GCF four, this would be four times five. And then what does x to the fourth actually mean? X times x times x times x. It just means four x's multiplied. Okay, step three complete. <clears throat> Now, the better you get at this, you'll be able to skip step one and two and just jump straight to step three. Um, I think I said step three earlier, it's step two complete. Uh, you'll be able to jump straight to step three, um, the better that you get at this. But since we're all still learning, let's go through the steps. So final step, we're gonna find the GCF and we're gonna write both of them as products. In your IXL code, you'll only be asked to find the GCF if you were in my classroom, I would be making you write them as products. So it's good just to practice. Here we go. So we already know the first part is four. So we know four is part of our GCF, but you have to account for the variables. Let's see, I see an X in common, but I also see another X in common. 
This one has two, and there are also two here. Now, would I write that as four times two x? That doesn't seem right. What does x times x actually mean? It means x squared. So the greatest common factor of these two monomials is 4x squared. That's all you'll be asked to do on your IXL. However, I'm making you write them as products. So here we go. Last step, 12x squared is, I'll write it below, take out the greatest common factor, 4x squared, what do you have left? So if I take out the four and I take out the x squared, what do you see? I see a three. Four x squared times three. Let's quickly multiply to see if we did that right. What's four times three? 12 x squared, boom, done. Second term, 20 x to the fourth. Okay, let's start with the greatest common factor, four x squared times what do we have left? Well, I see a five, and I also see, what does x times x mean again? Another x squared. So five x squared is left. Let's quickly multiply to check. Four times five is 20. What's x squared times x squared? Just remember, that means x times x times x times x. How many total times are you multiplying x? four times, so that's x to the fourth. So our GCF in our second example is 4x squared, and these are our two products. We're gonna wrap up with an exit ticket, so get your papers ready. Here we are, exit ticket. So I chose these two for a reason, because statistically, not statistically, historically, these are the ones that students have struggled with the most. So go ahead and pause the video right now, and try to do these on your own. <clears throat> Hopefully, if you pause the video, you realize why these are so difficult to do. Uh, let's go ahead and do them. So, finding the greatest common factor of two monomials. We have 4x squared and 16x to the third power. We're going to start with step one, which is finding the GCF of the coefficients. So, what is the greatest common factor of 4 and 16? Start with just the factors of four. So I know the factors of four are one times four and two times two. So I'm just checking to see, are those also factors of 16? Does one go into 16? Yes. Does four go into 16? Yes. Does two go into 16? Yes. In fact, all of them are. Which was the greatest one? Four. So I'm gonna start by factoring just the coefficients. This is four times one and this is four times four. So uh, now that I've found the greatest common factor of the coefficients, step two, actually write both terms as products. So here we go. Four x squared, 16 x to the third power. So four x squared, start with using the greatest common factor. This is four times one, and x squared is what time x times x? 16x to the third power using the greatest common factor is 4 times 4, and then x to the third power is x times x times x. Step two, check, done. Step three, find the GCF, write them both as products. So if I look here, they obviously both have 4 in common. So in my GCF, starts with 4, what else do they have in common? They have two x's in common. So am I writing this as times two x? No, you guys know that that's not right. X times x is another way of saying x squared. So my GCF is four x squared. And then kudos to you for writing the rest as products. So last step, four x squared. If I take out the four x squared, you might be thinking to yourself, what the heck is left over? You took out the entire term. What number is part of every product? One. So this is just 4x squared times one. In the second term, 16x to the third power, if I take out 4x squared, I'm left with a four 
x. Let's quickly multiply to check. 4x squared times 1 is 4x squared. Check. 4 times 4 is 16. x squared times x, that's just two x's here, plus one more is three. Check. So your GCF is 4x squared, and when you factor it out, you're left with 4x squared times 1 and 4x squared times x, or 4x, excuse me. Let's see if I can close these. It's a little bit easier to see. There we go. Now we got some of that shine off of there. You can actually see it, hopefully. All right, the second example is also really weird. Um, and you might have found why that is. In the first step, actually, you might see why that is. So finding the greatest common factor of seven and nine. So I start with seven because it's the smaller number. This should be pretty quick. The only way of writing seven as a factor or as a product is one times seven. So for nine, I'm just checking to see, does one go into nine and does seven go into nine? Well, most of you already know which one does go into nine. Does one go into nine? Yes, one goes into everything. So this is one times nine. Does seven go into nine? No, it doesn't. So the greatest common factor here is one of seven and nine. And that's okay, sometimes that will happen. So seven is just one times seven, and nine is just one times nine. Perfectly fine to use one as a factor. Step two, we're gonna write them using products. I'm getting a little messy here. Let's see, so seven y squared is one times seven times y times y. All right, fully factored that one as best as we can. Nine y is, using the greatest common factor, one times nine times y. Step two, Complete. Step three, find the GCF and write them both as products. So we know the GCF that they both had in common at first was one. What else do they have in common? They have a Y in common. So you can write that as one Y, but if I'm looking at that as like an algebra two teacher, I'm not really happy with that because one Y can be simplified. What is one Y or one times Y actually mean? It just means y. That's the only thing that these two numbers have in common. They have y. Now, let's go ahead and write them as products, just for extra practice. 7y squared, I'm going to write it off to the side this time, is, let's take out our common factor y, and then when I take out y, I'm left with, we're not really worried about the one anymore, uh, I'm left with 7 and y. y times 7y. When I take out y from 9y, again, not really concerned with the 1 anymore because it doesn't, it's not part of our GCF, I'm left with 9. And there you have it. So today's lesson was all about, I can scoot back in here, was all about finding the greatest common factor of monomials. So your IXL code today will have the same type of practice. That code number, if you want to get started on it, is Z, Z, U, Z, Z, U. And it's all about finding the greatest common factor of monomials. If you reach one that you don't understand how to do, try something, and if you get it wrong, look at the feedback from below and see if you can figure out your mistake. I hopefully have given you enough to be able to at least get started. Email me with questions, and this IXL code is due at the end of the week. Hope you all have a fantastic Monday. Excuse me, fantastic Monday. I'm thinking about you and yeah, have a great day.